Today I'm sharing with you the perfect recipe for spring and summer, and that's lemon bars. These are the perfect sweet treat for picnics and spring brunches, and my version of lemon bars have a gluten-free shortbread-like crust and a luscious, very lemony filling that is the perfect balance of sweet and tangy. I can assure you that if you don't tell anyone that they're gluten-free and dairy-free, that they'll never know because these healthy lemon bars taste just as good as their classic counterpart. So let me show you how to make them. To get started, preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit and line an eight inch square pan with parchment paper. The easy way to line your pan is just to press the parchment paper in all scrunchy like but if you want perfectly smooth edges on your lemon bars, I'll show you a little trick. Just cut your piece of parchment paper a few inches bigger than the base of your pan. I've cut mine to 12 inches square. Then place the pan on top in the middle of your parchment paper and use a pencil to draw around it. Place the pan off to the side and then use a pair of scissors to cut from each corner of the parchment paper to each corner of your pencil drawing. And then place the parchment paper inside the pan. Where you've made those slits in the parchment paper, the corners will fold over onto themselves, but if they get a little twisted, you can help them. It's just one flap on top of the other flap. And that's it. Now you've got your pan nicely lined with parchment paper and you won't have any wonky, ruffled edges on your lemon bars. I'm using my typical triumvirate of flours in this recipe, which includes almond flour, tapioca flour, and coconut flour, and they each serve a very different purpose, both in the crust and in the filling. The almond flour will form the bulk of the shortbread crust, and it provides a delicious texture and flavor. The coconut flour is also used in the crust, and because it's highly absorbent, it helps to ensure the crust stays together and not too soft. And then tapioca flour is used in the filling for structure, and its super fine texture means it just melts right in, undetectable. All right, so let's make the base crust of the lemon bars. You'll need one third cup coconut oil, a quarter cup of honey or maple syrup, and one teaspoon of vanilla extract. And I am now out of vanilla. Whisk those three ingredients together so that the vanilla extract is blended throughout the honey. And now for the dry ingredients. You'll add one and a half cups of almond flour, one third cup of coconut flour, and a quarter teaspoon of salt. Then stir that all together until you have a crumbly dough. You can use a spoon to stir this together, but to be honest, it's much easier to just dig in with your hands, so that's what I usually do to make sure that it gets well combined. Once that's done, you can pour it into your parchment lined pan. Spread it out into a flat layer while it's still crumbly, then press down on it with your hands to flatten it out. You really wanna get this nice and flat, so press down firmly and all the way into the corners. I'll usually use the palm of my hands to make sure it's pressed down and compacted as much as possible, because that will ensure I've got a nice, stable shortbread base for the filling that won't fall apart. Pre-bake the base on its own in the oven for about 13 to 15 minutes, or until it's slightly golden on top and a little bit more golden around the edges. While the base is pre-baking, you can make the lemon curd filling, and that starts with half a cup of honey or maple syrup and four large eggs. After testing this recipe a few times, I do wanna reiterate that the order in which you mix the filling ingredients does matter, so don't just toss everything into the bowl all at once. When you whisk just the honey and eggs together, you ensure that the egg is completely blended and you won't end up with little egg white speckles on the top of your lemon bars. Next, zest one large lemon. This will give you about a tablespoon of lemon zest or just slightly under that. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning, these lemon bars are truly very lemony, so if you find it's a bit too much for you, you can always reduce the amount of lemon zest in the future. And then juice that lemon along with a couple of others until you've got half a cup of lemon juice. I do wanna to reiterate to use fresh lemon juice here and not bottled lemon juice. There is no comparison in flavor between fresh and bottled, and since these lemon bars are all about fresh lemon flavor, don't skimp on that. So pour the lemon zest and lemon juice into the bowl and then whisk that together again until it's smooth. The last ingredient in the filling is three tablespoons of tapioca flour. 
I did try a lesser amount of coconut flour in the filling and didn't like the texture as much, and almond flour will be too gritty, so I do recommend tapioca flour here. And just whisk that into the lemon curd until it's smooth. All right, it's been 15 minutes, and you can see that the base has puffed up a bit. That's totally normal. When you remove it from the oven, just press it back down and try not to burn your fingers as I'm sort of doing. You can use a kitchen towel or oven mitt to press it flat again. You don't wanna poke the base with a fork to prevent puffing though, because then otherwise the filling will seep through. So pour the filling straight on top of the hot base and then transfer it back into the oven. It's obviously very liquidy at this stage, so do be careful moving the pan back into the oven and then cook it for 20 to 25 minutes. When it's done, remove it from the oven and double check that it's cooked long enough. It should be pretty firm throughout and not overly jiggly, sort of like firm jello. I undercooked one of my first batches by just a couple of minutes and then the filling stayed overly soft and never really set up when it was cooled, which meant that I couldn't stack the bars or take them with me. But today mine is looking perfect and that white that you see on top is just foam bubbles from whisking. Leave the lemon bars on the counter for an hour to let them cool completely at room temperature. And then once they're cooled, place them in the fridge for a couple of hours to firm up even more. All right, these lemon bars are now ready to be sliced into. You can easily pull up on the parchment paper to remove the lemon bars from the pan and then fold down the edges of the parchment paper. Because I know the parchment paper is going to block your view today while I'm cutting, I'll very carefully slide the parchment paper out from underneath. And voila, there's my block of lemon bars, which aren't quite lemon bars just yet. You can of course slice these as is, you don't need to add anything to them, but if you'd like, you can sprinkle a little bit of powdered sugar on top. Or in my case, a little bit more than a little bit of powdered sugar. I just wanted to make sure you could all see it on camera. Take a large chef's knife and slice through the block to create nine lemon bars. The center will likely still be a little bit sticky, so if you want perfectly cut lemon bars, I do recommend you wipe your knife between each slice. Just a little bit of goop on your knife does make the next slice not quite as pretty as the first, but if you don't care about pretty and just wanna dig in, I totally understand that as well. And then when you're done, you can flip one of those gluten-free lemon bars around and take a look at that perfect, luscious texture on the inside. Your crust should be nice and firm and not falling apart, and your filling should be soft yet holding its shape. I've eaten a couple batches of these lemon bars over the last few weeks, and I can honestly say they're like sunshine on a plate. They're perfectly sweet and just make you happy. You can find all of the tips I've shared today as well as the printable recipe over on my website, and I'll link to that below but I can't wait to see you guys make this recipe. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, share it with your family and friends, and I will see you again in the next video.